so uh there was the the square doing some i need to actually refresh myself as to what the whole thing was what whole thing um because we had been doing something <clears throat> um, this is news to me i i didn't actually you, you, you're gonna have to refresh my memory because if something happened with square enix i don't actually know about it um oh yeah no um yeah so it was uh about a week ago square enix president announces that uh oh okay he, he's, he's still wanting to apply um ai to uh generative ai for his uh games okay yeah that was a thing okay so that was a thing because I, i heard my friends talking about something i was like well, it was just that for okay not to get into the whole ai thing is just a topic of like okay we're gonna have to get into the ai thing is just a topic uh <laughs> I actually got into a discussion about this on my Discord server for my writing because uh, someone was um, talking to somebody else and complaining about how they were struggling with writing a scene or something along those lines. And the person they were talking to basically said, hey, why don't you just use AI? Um, and we didn't take that well, especially because, you know, AI has a lot of stigma attached to it. Um, Broadly speaking, AI isn't completely bad. Yeah, I, the, I agree. The, the thing about AI is it is a tool. And if you're playing guitar, it doesn't matter if you have a ratty-ass Les Paul, a ratty-ass, like, shitty, like, Stratocaster, cheap 100-pound guitar that you got from, like, a second-hand shop, or... A three thousand uh, dollar candy apple Les Paul Gibson, whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter what the tool you have is, what the instruments you're using. If you shit with the instruments, if you don't know what you're doing with your own skills, it's still gonna be shit. Mm -hmm. Such is the case with AI. If you have, say, for a writing AI, if you have. A writer who knows what they're doing, knows the subject matter, knows their shit, and they put a prompt into an AI and say, hey, do the groundwork for this for me. The AI will, the AI will do the groundwork, and the person who actually knows their shit will be able to correct and improve that groundwork and actually make it something worthwhile. But if you have someone who doesn't know all their shit and is just using the AI as a complete shortcut so they feel like they don't have to learn skills, then they're just going to get what the AI is going to give them and it's going to be shit and they're not going to know how to fix it. Yeah, the issue is with like when people try to replace creative skilled people by using AI, like you're you're not going to get what you want out of that. Yeah, you you still need the skilled people there to guide the AI for the basis and then actually build upon it to make something worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that, that was basically my stance when I was talking to this person and uh, saying like, yeah, this person was actually a pretty good writer. They've written a lot of omake for one of uh, my stories, quests, and they're really good. Uh, they could probably make the most of AI and actually find some use for it and actually help with the process. But uh, the person they were talking to then just basically said, yeah, just I don't I don't really give a shit. I just use AI and get it to write stuff for me so I can consume it because uh, hang on, let me just find the exact word that they use. I'm pretty sure they said writing is just the busy work. Uh so that you can get to the good stuff, which is reading. Which is, um... That's you know, a very uh, as, as someone take. who has written for, like, 14 years and spent 14 years, like, building skills and getting better at it and becoming not shit at it, and six years of, arguably, doing it professionally, uh, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frankly. Yeah, 100%. I'm not going to say that the writing process cannot be tedious at times because it absolutely can and usually is. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't mean, of course, that you can just shortcut past everything 
without utterly gutting the quality along the way. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the metaphor I used was uh, someone saying, hey, I'm a great cross-country sprinter. Look at the shoes I have. And they are pointing at a car, which yeah. they would then proceed to drive over this cross-country trail and drive into a ditch because it's a car. Yeah. In order to create real art, you need real finesse. And a catch-all randomly generating computer program is not going to give you finesse. Yeah. And will often just completely get things wrong. Like, you know, you always see those like, oh, this lawyer used AI in a court case and it just made up fake precedent. So, yep. And it's know. not even that good at generating things sometimes. Like, just yesterday, on a whim, just to see if it would do anything, I uh, had an idea in my head, so I tried to make AI generate an image of uh, a monstrous possessed dishwasher eating a hedgehog. Don't ask. That's and there was no... <laughs> it's an inside joke for someone. <clears throat> In any case, I tried putting in the input twice, and there was no sign of any sort of dishwasher in the picture. A hedgehog, certainly, but nothing close. Nothing even resembling a dish or a washer. Nothing. It just skipped over half of the nouns in the prompt. Yeah, there's, there, there is something to... Uh... I, I don't want to give any credence to people that say they are like, what's the term for it? Uh, what, Devil's advocate? The fucking, um, what's the term for the, th the prompt? A prompt artist or whatever the fuck they call themselves. Like, there there is, like, you need to know how to speak computer language in a very different and uh, unusual way to what normal computer language is to get the AI to understand the assignment it is being given. Okay, and that, that does take good. a little bit of work to figure out what exactly you have to do to get it to give you what you want. But uh, yeah. So um, to elaborate a bit on the Square Enix thing, mm -hmm. um, looking at the context here, uh, they had announced uh, or they'd shown a, a trailer for their NFT game back oh. in March. Okay, NFTs, they can get fucked up. And they had were like super hyper aggressive about applying AI. Um, and it was they have since uh, backed off because it has not worked out well for them. Hmm. Um, I, oh, yeah, no, it was Foam Stars uh, back in January had AI generated art. Um, <sighs> in it. Okay, well, let's be real. Foam Stars did not fail because it was AI. It failed yeah. because it was fucking. Oh, Splatoon I'm not saying only it, it shit. Did, I'm not saying it did fail because of that. I'm just saying that like they were using um, it, and mm. so the after the failure of them applying it um, over and over again, uh, they're they're being more cautious about applying it. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you know, makes sense. I I have seen um, studios say like really small indie studios um, say things like. Yes, we're going to start using AI. Uh, it is specifically going to be used for things like backgrounds, which are fairly simple, fairly tedious, and like just time sinks that an AI can just do. It can just do that, and it won't like spend six man hours on something no one's even going to be looking at that much. Like you said, AI is a tool. It yeah. should be used to facilitate the work, as long as it's not replacing it. That's yeah. the important thing. Um, also, uh, I want to talk about Dawn Trail now. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Okay. So the new expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, um, Dawn Trail, has come out. Rather, it's in early release right now. It officially comes out in a few more days. Yeah, I'm not going to be... I've not been playing, but I am currently at, at the point where I was like, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> like, 
I'm, I'm okay not waiting half an hour in the queue. I'm all right. I, I can give it a miss until the heat dies down. When, yes, I would say it's like the queue. I, I would try to queue in last night um, and I got into a queue of 3,000 yep. to log into the game. And I was like, mm, okay. It's not great now. Okay. It's going to be worse in two days. <laughs> yeah, so it's okay if you take your time uh, getting back into it. Yeah. So this was a massive massive uh update because um graphically this game looks like a more modern game <laughs> you know uh this thing was originally like four- 14 was like originally on the ps3 yeah. and the pc like that was the era we were working with now like some of the textures and um like especially for like the skin and the eyes of characters and uh, more dynamic on, lighting like, and things like that. You know, more dynamic lighting, really fantastic reflections too. Hmm. Like those reflections really, really make certain things that didn't look so good look fantastic now. Um, and they removed the freaking gray filter that was over the game, so it's now much more bright and colorful, like it should be. Ooh, I, I look forward to seeing my dapper gentleman, giant elf dude in like the enhanced appearance thing because i know they did that but it didn't really bother when they were doing the um test thing yeah so that's that's gonna be fun to see and maybe uh, spend a fantasia on depending on how it looks yeah you get a free fantasia to fix <clears throat> it up yeah I've, um, I've got one anyway from doing the realm reborn so it's fine you can get another one if you don't want to change it but um yeah. so uh i've played a significant amount of this um, and I still feel like I'm nowhere near the end of it, of the main story of Dawn Trail. <laughs> Zero, you're playing an MMO and you've been playing it for two days. No, you're I... not. No, you're not. <laughs> Some people have cleared today. That's crazy. They cleared yesterday. Th- those are, th- are the fucking people who do like 52 hour marathon, wear a diaper kind of people like. No, that's... and they also skip cutscenes so they can watch them later, uh... which yeah, I I am not a fan of. But you know what, you, different strokes for different folks. If if that's what you want to do, I guess. I mean, if you're skipping cutscenes because you don't care about the story and just like the game, fair enough. If if you're skipping cutscenes when you like the story, but you just really really want to be the one of the first people to finish. Oh, wow, way to ruin the experience for yourself is my opinion on that. But I don't know. Again, if that's what they want to do, more power to them. They can play their way. It's fine. I mean, to each their own, as you say. But I honestly think people should exercise a little more patience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, By the way, the person with, with the very nice voice is the patient one. <laughs> just, to, just to remind people who... Like, you know, we've occasionally gotten new people listening who usually end up thinking one of us is Kenshi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice voice is patient. Nerdy voice is zero. Asshole is me. Nerdy voice. I'm offended. Yeah. Um, so there were extra things that they... Um, uh, extra things. There's a ton of stuff in this freaking... Oh, me as Casey, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. that's the, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they introduced two channel dies. Um, so for certain gear sets, you can add a, a different color to change um, things for this. And this is a, a huge thing. This is not a small thing because one of the core motivations for playing this game is I want my character to look nice. Yeah, it would be really nice to look cool. I currently have like a, you know, a mecha suit thing going on for my armor because it's like the Ironworks gear. That looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to see what I could do with the colors. Yes. So currently not every set in the game has two channel die. Um, they're rolling it out with each um, subsequent patch, hoping to have everything um, with two channel by 7.4. Hmm. So, um, not everything has it. Um, any of the gear that you get for free, either through like story or what have you, um, that's all dialable with two channel. Um, stuff from the cash shop is dialable with two channel, you know. Hmm, granted. Um, and job gear is two channel dialable, like the job gear that is dialable. So and that's most like of the stuff. Just, just the stuff you get for doing job quests or stuff that is specific to certain jobs so like the ironworks and the catch-up gear is that or not 
Um, the ironworks is augmented uh, stuff, so you're likely not going to um, get that with two channel. Okay, I'm pretty sure. That's fine. That's okay. Because they're also um, uh, one thing they also did is they um, have been going back and updating uh, a lot of the textures for things and uh, upresing them and stuff. Um, like for example, the uh, ultimate weapons that are super nice and shiny are all getting high quality looks to them so everything is starting to look good but it also makes it look really really funny when you see a guy walk in and his armor is super crunchy compared to everything else yeah so we're not 100 percent there yet hmm. so that's a that's a big part of it um and like just visually this game has never looked better and i'm really happy about the area they chose to show that off because the theme of um, Dawn Trail is going to see a, an area called the New World, which you can probably put two and two together on that. Um, very South American themed area, and it's very bright and very colorful, uh, very lush with uh, greenery, and boy does it make full use out of the extra visual fidelity. Uh, for those who uh, don't know, um, Endwalker, the last expansion, was a gigantic conclusion to um, uh, an arc that had been going on since Final Fantasy XIV's launch. So, as, as in 1.0 launch, not yes, like, not like Realm Reborn, like the very beginning of the game that they rebooted. Mm -hmm. And Dawn Trail is the start of a new overarching um, quest line. As a result, it is extremely. It is extremely chill in comparison to the high stakes stuff that we've been having before, at least where I'm at so far. Hmm. Things um, happen, presumably. Oh yeah, yeah. Thing. It's, it's a JRPG. You you know how those end. Hmm. Um, things things go like grandiose in scale, uh, and in here uh, to kind of give the back of the box summary. Um, the Warrior of Light, your character, is recruited by um, a someone who's essentially a princess, but uh, basically um, kind of a, a warrior who was adopted by the leader of this country, Tuliol. Tuli Al, I can't pronounce it. Tuliolal. can't pronounce it. Tuliolal. And um, she wants you to help her win the contest for succession to the throne to become the Dawn Servant. And uh, she's competing with her brothers, as well as this uh, uh, one asshole guy who won a tournament to get there. And that's the premise. Go out, uh, do the challenges, and uh, you know, win the throne for her. Or with her. She's the main character of the story, basically. You're, hmm. you're the POV of the side character who's, you know, helping out. But you are very much not the focus of the story here. Some people will not like that, because they throw a fit whenever they're not the special little boy. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the story is going to shift in that direction at some point, though. Yeah. Um, it was like that for a while. Um, so this is essentially just an adventuring vacation um, as to the point where I'm at right now. Um, going on fun quests, uh, exploring new areas, meeting entirely different uh, um people and species and such that are native to this place. Um, it's super fun. Hmm. And I've been doing like every single side quest as I've come across it because I just I'm, I'm enjoying my time. Yeah. I don't want to rush through it. It's really fun and the area is beautiful. So uh, with this expansion, they also dropped two new classes. Pictomancer and Viper. And Pictomancer is so broken. It's so broken. It does the most damage. Like, literally. It does the most damage out of anything right now. Um, they're probably going to nerf it into the ground yeah, at some point. Yeah, it sounds like it. Like, if, if one class is super broken, they're not going to boost all the other classes. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, magical classes like Pictomancer um, do a little bit less damage than, like... Um, for example, melee DPS, because they can attack from safety, right? Mm. 
Um, this one out damages the melee DPS, so <laughs> bit of a mm, uh, no range tax on this thing. Yeah, the the way I understood it was um, melee DPS is just you know it's melee, and then you've got range DPS, which is one target from a distance, and magic would be AOE from a distance. Was how I understood it. Uh, magic is primarily is what I mean. Uh, no, they they are no? both. Okay. Um, they both are capable of AOE and uh, single target stuff. I mean, um, they're both capable of it. My point, my point was like oh. primarily they lean in one direction or the other. Mm. Yeah, actually, uh, now that you put it like that, I suppose you're right. Yeah, they do a lot of AOE splash damage from a distance. Um, if you're talking like uh, Black Mage, mm. the was, Red Mage that was, works. A bit that was very much my like from a distance understanding of how that works. Because I've only played Bard as a range class, so I don't really know much about yeah. any of it. I'm just going from what I've seen. Um, some of the other range classes are um, much more flexible one direction or the other. Um, like Machinist has a ton of tools at its disposal, for example. But mm. um, Pictomancer, the way it works is you, you take three seconds to draw a drawing, a picture. And... Um, that becomes your attack, essentially. So they they want to fill up their canvas with three pictures, and then they want to start using those pictures to do a ton of very powerful attacks. One of which is a funny cartoon hammer. It's great. Uh, very silly class. Uh, but uh, if you attempt to queue as a DPS to get into anything to level, um, good luck. Genuinely good luck. They, launch, they release two DPS. Mm, You're not yep. going to get into your roulettes. Mm, yep. The only way I've gotten into any roulettes is by uh, getting into a party beforehand. Mm. So, I haven't really played Pictomancer. I can't really say much on it, but the people who have played it um, have really liked it. It's apparently very mobile as well. Mm. So, pretty fun. Um, the other class, though, that I have dived deep into is Viper. Viper is a two-sword wielding class. <laughs> I, I can finally be a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have to use the knives anymore. You don't have to be a weeb anymore. <laughs> exactly. Um I think Viper is the best, like literally like it's it's my favorite DPS in the entire game. Um it looks complicated at first, but it's actually incredibly easy to pick up. Um because the way it works is you hit one button, another button lights up. Hit that button, that another button lights up. Keep doing that while doing your combos and double weaving in things, and you're fine. You have like two self buffs and a debuff that you inflict on an enemy. And um, the buff you have, one of the buffs you have, makes you go fast like a ninja. So go fast to combo, basically. And you are stringing together lots of buttons and combos. It's very, very fun. And. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's relatively light on the positionals, too. That's nice. Uh, I leveled it to 90 on the first day. Because you start it, when you first get it, it's at level 80. And so I'm like, I'm not going to Dawn Trail until I have Viper level. So I did it through some uh, cheesing of abusing the fact that the game, um, the game maintenance ends before the daily reset. So I just got to wake up early. And unfortunately on that day, I couldn't sleep and woke up at 3 a.m. Mm. So, um, yeah, no, I, I got to 90 and I kind of crashed out. Bleh. But I think um, everybody should try Viper. I think it's the most approachable uh, DPS, for my in my opinion. People who don't normally like melee DPS love Viper, from what I've seen. My friends uh, who have tried it out. Uh, it's just incredibly well designed, and uh, Casey, you've played Ninja, so um, yeah. no more uh, no more windmill, no more hutong that you have to worry about. That's a passive trait. It's so yeah, nice. That's that's the point. Is that is that just general, or is that a thing you unlock later? That is. Um, well, let me look at. The, they worked it into a trait. I'm not sure what level the trait is. It is. Um, let me just double check. It's, I think it's 
Yes, it's a level uh, 45, which is the level you would have gotten that anyways. Oh, cool. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's awesome. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, they added a new bar, um, and all it does is uh, every time you use Armor Crush, you get two of these little shuriken, um, which power up your Aeolian Edge, which is your other finisher of your basic combo. So it's, so you're basically just, okay, do Armor Crush, then do Aeolian Edge, and that's that's it. Cool. Uh, everything else, like, they removed Hudaijin because you don't need that, so you have one less button to worry about um, for people who are high enough to have that. Uh, and they just upgraded and buffed a lot of the stuff that Ninja has. Neat. They get no, no, no new buttons from 90 to 100. Like, yep, that's it. Yeah. Actually, it's... Mm, yeah, no, no, no new buttons. I mean, that's just good because nin so much of ninja is know your sequences so just like if, if that's the mechanic for the class then don't there's no need to give us lots of buttons like that's half of the point of having it be sequences yeah it was uh i was having some serious button bloat issues um uh, with ninja at high level and <clears throat> now i have one less button to worry about and that's more space yeah so Yay. I don't have to worry about Hutan, which means if somebody pulls a stupid and decides to early pull a tough boss, I'm not losing out on a ton of damage because I didn't get to do my whole pre-pull ritual. Yeah, it's just uh, sweet on, and then you can do your um, uh, damage up stuff, and then just fucking go to town. Yep. That <clears> easy. <throat> so that's very much appreciated. And uh, I'm, I'm finding Ninja to be very fun to play. That I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Uh, because I'm I'm leveling it on the side because Ninja and Viper both share the same gear. They're both scouting, so I'm just gonna level both because I estimate in the future I'm gonna have a problem with everybody wants to play Viper. So <laughs> I, so if it's like we don't we I I can switch to Ninja so we don't have just two Vipers, you know, mm. being able to have that flexibility. Uh, and. Yeah, there's there's so much I could talk about, but I don't want to go too into anything because of spoilers. I mean, I was going to say don't go into everything because we've talked about this for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, I guess one last sort of thing to say about um, the game aside from... Uh, well, I got two things left to say. Um, the music's fantastic, with, which should be expected, but the music yeah. is fantastic of everything they added. Honestly... The trailer theme, the original trailer theme was better than the revised version, but, uh, yeah. Once I <clears throat> got off the boat at the big city that you start at in the new world, immediately big band starts playing. And it was so fantastic. I felt like I was in a Donkey Kong Country level. <laughs> but a little bit even more jazzier. Great. Um, honestly, have not found any music that I have disliked uh so far cool though the, the the city is designed to be highly vertical so traversing oh, it can be a little bit tough oh boy okay um yeah okay that's that's always an uh, interesting thing to overcome <laughs> um so at like, release oh, which section of lanosia is the thing i'm looking for is it the top or the bottom Fuck. Uh, I don't know, and the map is still a pain in the ass to use. I look at the map, and like, how do I get there? How do I get up to that? Okay, I guess I gotta go around. Oh, hmm. Yeah. It is really just a little bit frustratingly designed, but, and I wish there were a little bit more of the um, little aetherites around the town so you can get around faster. Yeah. But, you know, they, they've been doing bigger and bigger um cities each expansion um i think chris uh the one in shadowbring and crystarium was probably one of the worst because it just had a ton of empty space and you can't pull out a mount or anything so you just walk forever uh and i guess last thing i want to mention is there were some interesting bugs on launch um because you know you're you're reading you're rebuilding a lot of stuff, so there's obviously going to be some interesting bugs and changes. 
One of which is that for male Al Ra, when they use the eat pizza emote, their face inverts. Like, <laughs> I'm going to post this uh, so you can see this. Um, th their face just inverts because they added a bunch of facial bones um, to the characters so they can have art can be more expressive. So <laughs> the glitch where their face just collapses in on itself. It's funny. It, hang on. Oh, bear with me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just like they had a lemon. Shelbyville lemon bite. Yep. <laughs> um, That's the one. <laughs> the update also uh, temporarily broke um, a lot of ice mechanics. Okay. So I I had a, a moment in which I um, like queued into a, a whole alliance, big 24 man, and then somebody's like, oh, this one's broken, everybody leave. I'm like, oh, fine. And everybody left, including the people who had to sit in queue as waiting for this one thing to spawn so they get their experience for their Viper or their pick demands, and they all had to leave. It was very sad. They put out a hotfix now, so it's it's fine. I think that um, I can't wait for more people to get their hands on uh, this expansion. Because I know a lot of people who um, are not caught up with the story, Casey mm -hmm. included. Yeah. Uh, I think it's great. I heard there were some complaints about uh, it being boring, but I don't understand what that means. Like, it's not constant high stakes, It's, but, like, it's still a very entertaining and well-written story. So, yeah, yeah. that was right. my big thing. I mean, we've had four expansions of high stakes. Like, you're, you're allowed to have slower stories that do yeah. more. Yeah, uh, that's... Slower, I'd, I'd more say grounded, driven. but it's a royal succession crisis, so it's not a, exactly grounded, but, you know. It is very character-driven, um, which is nice. <clears throat> you didn't really know the people who are trying to go for the throne, because there's only, there's only four of them, mm. you know? So, and you don't, you're not here with all of the scions or anything, right? The uh, only people of the scions that you're with are Alphano, Alize, and Kryle. That's it. That's trailer's deceptive unless they show up later, I guess. Um, other characters may be uh, in the world, but they are not with your main party. Your main party is uh, rather small. Hmm. So, like, other, like, the other characters exist that they're just doing their own thing. Okay. And I like that. Good way to focus more on the individual characters and just, like, I don't know they're they're out, they're out there they got their stuff, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I'm really enjoying my time with this game. I've been jumping around in it while I've been talking because that makes my brain go work. Uh, and the only other th I didn't even consider. Oh, Zero is obviously currently playing the game. <laughs> if here's the thing, there's a 30 minute timer. If I don't move in the game for 30 minutes, yeah, yeah. I get logged out and I have to go through the queue again. Okay. So I have to uh, be on the ball here. All right. That's fine. Okay. And I also went and I saw a movie. Mm -hmm. I, saw, um, I was taken to go see um, Bad Boys Ride or Die. <laughs> okay. Which is, is uh, it's, it's one of the Bad Boys movies, if you've ever seen any of them. I have seen two, I believe. As in the second one, not two of them. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. I, I, it's you know, um, it's just uh, I really enjoyed my time with that. Uh, the the, review, uh, the reviews on it were not great because it's you know, it's kind of a silly comedy, but I had I had a lot of fun with that. That was like good brain turn off uh, watch movie had a good evening with that um so you know if if there's a half off movie night uh, at your theater uh consider go watching that the uh it's will smith and martin lawrence so um they have a whole thing where they're trying to clear the name of their former um boss who has passed away and had a whole bunch of um false evidence planted in like his accounts and because he's not alive to defend himself he was just basically thrown under the bus for other people's criminal acts so they're going through to try to clear his name and there's corruption in the police force gasp 
So, mm. <laughs> I mean, let's 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 be real. It is a movie about black police officers. What mm-hmm. else was going to be the plot in the 2020s? <laughs> yeah, like of course. You only have so many options when that is the premise. Oh, I'm not. I'm not uh, besmirching the movie's choice. I'm just saying that. Like, no, I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> um, it mm, very much a real thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was really fun. Aside from that, I don't know. It's summer. It's hot. It's so hot. I there was a my taskbar had a little fire sign with an exclamation mark on it, which I've never seen before, and that was for the weather. Okay. So I'm not going outside. <laughs> that's 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 my time. <laughs> the weather widget says, "Fuck this shit, I'm out." <laughs> yeah, no, it's we 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 we've passed the point of oh, it's a little bit hot out. It's, there's it's, it's dangerous. Don't go outside. Hmm. So hot. Hot damn. Yeah. At least we have AC. So, Casey, how you doing? I'm cool. I'm I'm going next. Okay. Um, so I said we were going to talk about Square. What I actually meant was, uh, yeah. So Kingdom Hearts released on PC for real, finally. Yay. 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 How is it? It's. I mean, it's Kingdom Hearts. It's still good. Yeah. So, I have spent. Okay, I'm going to be perfectly real. I have spent the past two weeks alternating between 100% completing Kingdom Hearts one final mix <clears throat> and writing a quest that I could not get out of my head for love no money for the past two weeks which has not been great professionally speaking uh, mm-hmm. writing a quest that uh, one no one asked for two no one's reading and three no one's paying me for <laughs> but uh, I'm having fun with it so fuck it um, yeah that cataclysmic failure of attention span is probably a sign that I needed a break anyway. Um, so, you know, I did, um, that, uh, things happened in May that caused me to fall behind massively, and then at the turn of June, I burned myself the fuck out trying to catch up on everything, succeeded, but then had nothing in the tank for a long time, and failed Mm -hmm. to get anything done for a couple weeks. And then this happened. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm just taking a break right now and doing whatever the fuck I want to do, uh, decompressing, de-stressing, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been doing, and uh, yeah, that's that's been good so far. I am getting back to the point where I need to. Okay, I need to get some stuff done that's actually important. And people are paying me for, but uh, yeah, it has it has been good to just take a breather have a little fun with writing again which you know is is a thing i like to remind myself of at times when i'm doing paid work is like hey i actually do like writing um but that doesn't that only partially removes some of the stress and strain that it puts on you when you're writing for you know financial gain when it's your job um doesn't get rid of it it just lessens it so still need to take breaks and do things for you sometimes mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's been fun uh if you haven't got your health you haven't got anything yeah yeah I'm glad to get the chance to uh, actually take a break yeah well i mean i gave myself the chance yeah. by giving up money for a little bit <laughs> i'm glad you, you know. decided to actually do that yeah okay um what else did i do? oh in my critical failure of attention span, I started another fucking mobile game for the sake of, hey, I feel like trying this thing that I keep seeing advertisements for and I have no attention span, so the whims are just destroying me. And I tried a game called State of Survival. Don't play that fucking game. Yeah? It is a zombie survival base builder, you know state of decay only fucking mobile game yeah. and by mobile game i mean it is a maze of timers and seven thousand shops literally everything costs you money it, well 
Not literally, but effectively. If if you want to participate in events, if you want to do uh, like any of the new characters and get them, then you are going to have to shell out some cash. Don't fucking play this game. Honestly. The, the, the friggin' anime gacha games are kinder to your wallet than this game is by an order of magnitude. You know it's bad when when you're looking at when you can say something like that. It's really interesting because uh, I've I've played and tried out a lot of gacha games just cuz like uh, like Casey I have a uh, poor attention span and impulse control and I'm like, "Ooh, I want to try that that thing I keep seeing advertisements for." <clears throat> um that sounds like one of the worst examples I've seen or heard. Um, it's it's it, kind of amazing. Like, <clears throat> I played for about a week, which, you know, is, is about the introductory period of, hey, do a bunch of stuff to get yourself started and you'll get a bunch of free stuff. And it is all the most basic and shit stuff that you can get. And it just drip feeds you new characters that you can't get anywhere else except for for participating in the paid events. It's kind of mind boggling. That's mm. the 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 entire paid events thing has me really like I don't like that. I really don't like that. The only time that something like a paid event would be acceptable is if it's just meant to be completely bonus, completely aesthetic, completely dedicated to the very, very most dedicated of fans who w- would jump at the chance to shell out money for more bonus content and such. Just stuff that only matters if you're a really passionate fan interested in bragging rights and such. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What what experiencing that game has told me is anime gotcha gets a bad rap, man. That gets yeah. all of the shit all of the time, but the mainstream games, holy shit. Oh yeah, they're bad. They take advantage about people who know nothing about um gotcha games. Like this this is a game that has had collaborations with fucking Walking Dead. Uh it's currently running a collaboration with uh Ninja Turtles. Uh, there is an upcoming collaboration with fucking what's that mecha thing with the Jaegers? Uh, oh, uh, Pacific Rim. That's the one. Pacific Rim. There's one of those coming as well. Like it, it, it is so mainstream. It is doing mainstream brand deals, and it has so many fucking like reaching, grasping hands trying to claw money out of your wallet. It is insane. It's because its target audience is older people who are not familiar with, you know, this sort of thing, right? So it's taking advantage of them. I assume it's doing a good job if it's getting those brand deals. Oh, yeah. It's 100% doing a good job. I imagine, like, uh, people like my dad's age um, are like, hey, I like The Walking Dead. Sure. Pick it up and uh, end up just spending money because, you know what? Gamble. I spent money on it. Yeah, Again, how much? Imp- impulse control and all that. Don't ask me that. I spent money. <laughs> it's it's not that much, but it's more than I'm comfortable with. Because I was like, okay, this seems pretty cool. I actually like the gameplay of this. I like I like the management aspect. The combat is whatever. But the management aspect is actually pretty cool. I am down with this. I'm willing to spend some money to get a, get a leg up and get things going. Uh... Okay, which of the 50 different things should I actually spend money on? And you have to, you know, run the maze of, okay, which of these, like, fucking super sale item bonus things are worth actually spending money on? And you figure that out, and it's like, oh, okay, that's that's done. Right, so how do I get more characters? Like, it, the getting new characters is actually kind of difficult and time-consuming. Um, and I'm only getting, like, three where are the other ones? Uh, and then I realized, oh, you can only get them by doing like the paid stuff and going along with that. Oh, 
the paid stuff act, getting the paid characters actually leads to other paid events that you can do if you have those paid characters okay I, I, hmm. I see what's going on here I made a mistake <laughs> This is this is like you get your FGO character, but you want to do their interlude or rank up, uh, fork over five dollars. Yeah, pretty much. That is pretty much what that's, it is. That's horrifying. <sighs> so that was a mistake, and I regret it very much. Um, but that's that's the risk you take when you try new mobile games, and you pick the one that you've heard of because you've seen a bunch of ads on Blue Stacks or whatever. They they probably got the money from that for doing shit like this. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, mistakes were made, but you know. Hey, live and learn. Hanging on the edge, the edge of tomorrow. Of tomorrow. <laughs> did I mention I played Sonic Frontiers again? I think I did. I think you might have. Yeah, I think I mentioned I was playing it again. I finished it again. Um, did all of the stuff, hundred percent completion of everything. That was cool. I like the added uh, challenge stuff that they added of like the little yellow balls that you gotta collect and do like tricks and stuff around the map, which taking advantage of the open world map, that was a good choice on their part to add something like that. That was really mm-hmm. cool. Uh, and I had just started the uh, extra episode where you get the second ending. Uh, started playing as Amy Rose, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool, this is neat, different gameplay, like, exploring the island in a different way. That's neat. Oh, hey, Kingdom Hearts is on Steam now. (laughs) That's how that happened. (laughs) So, you know. I, okay, I really like how Amy plays in Frontiers. It's actually pretty cool, yeah. She she gets, like, triple jumps and whatever. Yeah, like, that's really fun. And, And then you get to Tails, and you're like, oh, yeah, flying. Hmm. Love love breaking things with flying. <laughs> Has the funniest ability in the game. I'm, I look forward to you discovering it. I will get there eventually. I have. I only have six ish more Kingdom Hearts games to play, including the one that is technically three games in itself. It's okay. I'm willing to bet you'll be distracted before you finish. Oh boy, will I. Next is Chain of Memory, so you know, fucking... <laughs> oh. I would honestly say that that's zero consolation. <laughs> Pun. Hmm. Bringing it today. Speaking of patient, bringing it. How, how you doing, patient? I'm alright. Not much has been going on. Just more of the same. Mm-hmm. Just time keeps going on, and it seems to me like the most important thing I can be doing while I'm in this in-between time is focusing on losing weight. I don't know if I've... I don't know how much I've been candid about this, but I haven't stepped on a scale in a long time. The last time I did, it wasn't able to read my weight because it only went up to 400. So that's Mm. some idea of how much I've let myself go. So I'm starting to get into the habit of going to the gym more. Just Mm. after focusing on praying, reflecting, and advice from friends, that just seems to be the most important thing that I can be doing right now is focusing more on my physical health so Mm -hmm. yeah that's about that's the only real change that's happened since last we spoke uh, mm. yeah i mean if if you've got the time to do it and you've got the will to do it then there's no reason not to take that time and you and put it to some purpose so, when I was yeah. doing uh, full-on fitness, I've, I've, I've kind of fallen out of it now, but I'm, I'm going to get back into it. Um, I, it, you're going to find that you're going to have just a lot more energy. Your mood's going to, in generally, like be better because um, exercise like that is a good way to um, get some of those negative like feelings out of your head. It's a a mechanism that some people use to cope. So. Rather than like indulging in food, uh, 
going and running for a bit can help clear the mind. So yeah, I think that focusing on your health is a great idea. Um, also, uh, I don't know if you're, how you're adjusting your diet, but, uh, make sure you're, you're getting a good balance. I'll do what I can. There was a point in the past where I was on something of a kick of losing weight. It was <sighs> the biggest contribution was just having the self-control to not eat when I wasn't hungry. As simple mm -hmm. as that. Yeah. Um, and learning how to not eat immediately when you are hungry, right? Uh, having to wait for proper meal times. Um, my uncle is over 400 pounds. Um, he dropped it all once. Once, just through like exercise and like dieting. And he became really, really skinny. Um, he has not dropped it since. But like he got it all back. But that was mainly because of you know bad marriage and stuff like that, mm. having a having a kid, that sort of thing, just piling up on and on and on and all the stresses. Mm. But if you just keep to it and like keep to a routine, you can form some good habits that can um, keep you uh, thin once you lose all that weight. You know? Yeah, and I mean, I do kind of enjoy exercise. It is invigorating. And there is, there is something rather pleasing about the exhaustion that comes from pushing yourself all the way, even the soreness of the muscles. It's yeah, just... There's a sense of accomplishment. Yes, exactly. It's just getting started that's been the hardest part for me. I mean, this past week, I plan to go to the gym three times, just spending a little time at the gym three times a week I only managed once which I mean is better than not at all and I'm definitely going to make sure that it's no less than once going forward but still I thought I was taking baby steps already uh, can I make a recommendation you can um, on the days in which you do not want to go to the gym um, still resolve yourself to do some exercises at home where that's, you know, doing some crunches or some push-ups, something to get your body to still actually expend some energy and get used to working out. I mean, that much is fair. And I mean, I think I, I think I burned a decent number of calories yesterday since I went out shopping at Costco. That's a fair amount of walking around that warehouse. So well, yeah, it's big. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even if, even if, yeah, it is just that simple of going for a walk. And mm -hmm. just, I mean, it, it is Texas in summer, so be careful, <laughs> but still. <laughs> you don't have to tell me about being careful in Texas heat. Yeah. I take, I pretty much take any opportunity I can to avoid going out into it. Yeah, I lived um, in uh, Texas, I understand. Understandable, yes. <sighs> and so, like, just do some um, simple exercises that you can do indoors when, like, it's just too bad and you don't want to go out. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's just like jogging on the spot or something. Yeah, um, jogging on the spot. If you if you live in a house that has stairs, you can actually just continuously go up and down those stairs, and that's a form of exercise. Yep, that was my exercise routine because I'm a fucking hermit. It's just <laughs> exercise on stairs. There's uh, a bunch of different routines that you can do with stairs, actually. Mm -hmm. Which was again how I used to do exercise. Mm -hmm. I really need to get back to exercise. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, it's going to be a long, a long process to get to a healthy weight, but I mean, if someday I can say I lost over 200 pounds, then I think I'm going to be very happy. Hmm. Just a uh, heads up, as somebody who, I uh, like, I didn't drop nearly as much. I dropped like 40 pounds at one point, but um, you will plateau at points, right? I know, I know. So. Just keep pushing through, and then all of a sudden you'll just start boom, 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 pat, like shedding those pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be, I think I'll be content to just reach that first plateau, if anything. Burst through that plateau, you can do it. Determination. I know. I'll just take the victories as they come along the way as well. Yeah, exactly. You take it day by day. Yeah. Only with it. 
Yeah, besides that, not much else. I've started replaying Super Mario Odyssey. I've... Yeah, good game. Yeah, I'm finishing up the Luncheon Kingdom now. Yeah, that uh, reminds me. Huh? We cancelled last week. Oh, yes, yeah, so we haven't discussed the Nintendo Direct. There was a Nintendo Direct. Brother ship looks cool. I missed Mario and Luigi. I'm glad it's back. Mario and Luigi is back. At, like Alpha Dream died, but Mario and Luigi did not. That series has continued to exist. I think they have some of the original developers from Alpha Dream working at Nintendo now working on this. I mean, look at this. We've got Super Mario RPG remake, Super Mario, Super Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door remake, and now Mario and Luigi are back. They are on a hot streak for the for the for the Mario RPGs. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they're all returning. Um, Thousand Year Door outsold Origami King. Like Super Mario RPG did well. Like the Mario RPGs are back and they're doing very well. So they're gonna keep making them now. Yeah, happy about that. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Just hey, home console games, guys. <laughs> Like I mean, yeah. they don't have a fucking handheld anymore anyway. But yeah, I, I'm oh, real games. Real games. I mean, the, the the status quo for a long time was that the um, portable consoles always outsold the home consoles. Yeah, well, now they have both, so they can make real games and then make them portable. Exactly. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Brothership is a really interesting transition of the. Um, 2D sprite-based art style to 3D. It looks beautiful. I love the cell shading. I love the squash and stretch that they have in all the animations. Mm. Um, translating from the 2D to 3D. It looks great. Yep. That said, and... uh, JRPGs, thy name is Nintendo Direct June. Holy, holy, yeah. holy crap. There were a lot of them. Uh, that... That Fantasian Neo Dimension, I've I've heard some people excited about that one. That is uh, the original creator of Final Fantasy's final game. Mm. It was an Apple Arcade exclusive, I believe. Uh, oh my. That is getting ported and updated to be a real game. Uh, yes. <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, um uh, and getting additional content to it as a result. Uh, that is, I've forgotten what his name is, but again, creator of Final Fantasy, and I believe Nobuo Uematsu did the soundtrack for that as well. Yeah. Just uh, basically you're... the absolute old school old heads are just going to go crazy for it, I assume. Hmm. Hironobu Sakaguchi. <clears throat> I wasn't too interested in the... Nintendo World Championship NES edition or that fairy tale game or the Nintendo Switch Sports thing. I, I completely that... forgot that Nintendo Switch Sports existed until they brought it up. <laughs> but that Mio Memories in Orbit, that looks to be the same that art style as Hollow Knight, the same gameplay style as well. It's similar. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like it could be fun. <laughs> oh. Uh, I have to admit, yes, go ahead. Farm, Farmagia, Farmagia. Uh, yeah. It it got, uh, someone posted like the trailer of it before, long before the direct, and I asked the question, so is this supposed to be Farmagia or farm magia? It turns out um, it is farm yeah, it magia. Is. <laughs> Yeah, the answer is yes there. <laughs> so, yeah, you grow monsters on your farm and Yeah, just, honestly it's a it's a pretty interesting concept, I'll admit that. Uh the monster rancher, I want to say is a similar <laughs> when you put it back. <clears throat> only this one has um uh fairy tale rune master artist doing it. So it, it's kind of a Dragon Quest situation where they're trying to do, hey, this popular artist is going to work with us on the game and use their style. Speaking of Dragon Quest. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. So Dragon Quest 3, actually 1, 2, and 3, yeah. are getting HD 2D remakes. 
And that's really exciting for um, some fans of the Dragon Quest series. I know my brother was very excited about that. He's been getting into that game series. Functionally, that is really exciting for Japan and maybe a few people in the West. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's You get to experience the first three games, um, which I'm not sure if they were all translated the first in, in game English. was released in the west under the alternate title of dragon warrior uh and was i believe handed out entirely for free as a magazine uh extra because nintendo really wanted the fucking jrpgs to take off and they just weren't <clears throat> of course now i mean I can't say for sure that this is what's going to happen, but I know that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is the reason that I got into Persona, which is Persona 5 is now one of my favorite games of all time. It's also <clears throat> the reason that I got into Banjo Kazooie, one of the old time classics. So, with Hero being one of the Smash characters, it might incentivize certain people who grew fond of Hero through playing Smash Ultimate into well, playing the, the yeah. is, Dragon Quest games. That probably happened for Dragon Quest Eleven. I mean, that did happen for Dragon Quest Eleven because, hey, I bought Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah, me <laughs> so, too. I also bought and played it. I, I don't know if that reaches back to get people to play the really, really early ones, though. It worked for my brother. So got him to go back. Some people might, but I wouldn't expect it to catch on massively. It, there will be well, people it's... that will give it a go. Um, <clears throat> I mean, let's be real. I have not gone back to even look at Final Fantasy 1 through whatever when they got released, re-released. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, aside from that... Uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD was announced. It's already come out at this point. Yeah. Um, or streamed it. Which yeah, I okay. I have no interest to get it right now. I mean, that, that was the, the DS one that people panned because it was kind of just nothing. It introduced a lot of interesting like gameplay mechanics, but it lost a lot of the charm of the <clears> original. <throat> and uh, it took some risks that I feel like didn't pan out ultimately. Like, I didn't play it myself. I, I watched a Let's Play of it, and it seemed fine. It didn't seem like something that I would enjoy playing. The The thing about Luigi's Mansion 3 is it combines the best parts of 1 and 2 and makes a very, very good game. 1 and 3? Three? Uh, 3 combines the best parts of 1 and 2. Um, ah. Sorry, I don't know if I misspoke there. Um, and that's great, but without the parts of one that people really liked too is feels very empty kind of a devil may cry 2 situation yeah like devil may cry 2 added some really cool stuff but it definitely wasn't a great devil may cry game <laughs> or a great game for them or alternatively or dmc devil may cry if you want to go with that instead that is also a valid choice for that franchise of hey did some cool stuff no <laughs> Like, um, the way to, to kind of give, uh, be a little bit more precise in my description here. Um, one takes place all within one mansion, uh, and you have these various portrait, uh, they're called portrait ghosts, but they're, they're ghosts that are like actual ghosts of people um, that are the bosses that you encounter with their own mechanics and personalities coming out. And that's a, that's a huge part of one. Mm. That and like the tight area design of the mansion. <clears throat> Luigi's Mansion 2 removes the portrait ghosts as bosses. There's none of that. The first boss is like a giant ghost spider. The spider queen. Yeah. Not remotely similar to the one from Okami. And so they just, use multiple different spider mansions. And they just say it's a ghost. For yeah. It sounds like yeah. a generic monster. Yeah. It's not yep. even that. <laughs> yeah. You have a ghost that's possessing it and that's all there is to it that's really lame and actually, you have to conceptually that could actually be cool but i've mm. you would have to do some very interesting things with that to make it like worthwhile otherwise it's just yeah. a fucking spider 
And I'll tell you this, they were not very creative in <laughs> naming the enemies, according to the Let's Play that I watched. The various spiders around the mansion, you know what they're called? Spiders. Spiders. I, I was right, okay. <laughs> you know, and... Mario, the series is known for its wacky enemies and their names. And then there's uh, the mice that are skir skirting around. They're called mice. Mm. And there are these uh, parasitic orange flowers. They're called orange flowers. Mm. Yeah, I feel like they kind of lost a step there, not calling them, like, I don't know, spiddly spoos and misos and whatever. Yeah, some something <clears throat> that, that, like, I don't know, actually design something rather than just take something from the real world and put it in the Mario world. Um, so... Luigi's Mansion 2 has that problem where none of the, the the bosses aren't really people, so they can't have their own stories or it things or motivation. It doesn't sound like it's a Mario thing. It's what it yeah, sounds like. exactly. And there's multiple mansions <clears throat> instead of one. So instead of one tightly interconnected um, building that you're moving through, it's three entirely separate ones. It's It's hardly like <clears throat> it's hardly the same game in a lot of ways. Did you say three i think it was three it was five five oh my gosh it was five the levels the levels had pretty interesting themes there first there was the gloomy mansion which is typical mansion then the haunted towers which haunted greenhouse basically with all with the plants everywhere and such old clockworks machines there i can't remember the the, la the fourth area but i know that it was an ice themed area and then the treacherous manor was the last one which returned to the original mansion format for uh the uh, return of king boo uh, luigi's mansion 3 does all those themes and more uh with its yeah. hotel floors it's fantastic mm -hmm. um and it's all one building too with like different floors yes but there's an interconnectedness um, that applies at, at points and yeah. dialogue and story that matters. I liked it. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, yeah, so... hotel is just a fantastic setting for a haunted location. Like just yeah, I mean, that's shining up and down. That's great. The only complaint I have is. That some of these floors, no, most of these floors. It, how do you do this in a hotel? <laughs> it's the Mario world. They don't care. It's the Mario world I and know. it's magic. Screw it. <laughs> we don't got to explain shit. There's magic Koopas. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. They literally are magic Koopas, yeah. True. Uh... Yeah, we have an entire recreation of Egypt on one floor with a pyramid and tons of sand and Look. a tomb beneath that pyramid. Vegas exists, all right? Exactly. There's some ridiculous shit that can happen in hotels. Yeah, and it, it, they take that to its extreme, and I love it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not buying two. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, other, other charming games that we won't be buying, I think. That Disney Illusion Island thing. I don't I mean, even remember that, and I watched this thing twice. Yeah. The cute uh, Animal Crossing with Hello Kitty. I mean, Hello Kitty is always cute, but I'm not really that interested in playing the game. Get Looney Avril Tunes... Lavigne to do the soundtrack and we'll talk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Looney Tunes Sports. Uh, if I were more into sports games, then I'd probably go for it, but I'm not. They should have uh, just released a Space Jam game. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> going to be just a Space Jam game. No one's going to play the other ones. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Sure, why not? And the, and the Donkey Kong Country, the Donkey Kong fans are uh, rather annoyed, methinks. In fact, I know one particular YouTuber who... <laughs> he is livid at how... We haven't gotten a new Donkey Kong game since Tropical Freeze. Literally, <laughs> the the 
Donkey Kong fandom is in the like limbo of just getting port after port after port. Yeah. Mario versus Donkey Kong. That's a Mario game. And then Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. It's a port. And not even that great of one. Even if it does have the 3DS exclusive levels added into it. That, that <sighs> game originally came out on the Wii. It's been on every console to come out since then. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Funko Fusion. Why was that even there? Because people buy Funko Pops. How did that what? Gears of War Funko thing go? Did anyone actually buy that? I don't even know. I completely forgot about it until you just brought it up just now. I didn't think about it until I saw that Funko Pop game. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good uh, measure. Yeah, that's a good indication of how that went, I guess. I don't even know um, if it came out. I do want to was... talk about... What was that? Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. I saw quite a few people when I was watching reactions on YouTube who were rather excited about Metal Slug. Mm. I am not familiar with the franchise. It, it's an arcade franchise. It's like whatever. Uh, Side scrolling shooter. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, is is there anything else worth talking about aside yes. from? Oh yes. Aside I want to. From... The mm -hmm. big one at the end. Yes. How about uh, okay? How about the Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom? Oh right, yeah. Zelda is doing a thing. She's not allowed to fight again, but that's okay. Uh, that's kind of not her character generally, anyway. Uh, it looked neat, I guess. Very very puzzle game kind of uh, idea behind it. It looked cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, the same people. Um, who made the Link's Awakening uh, remake um, w using the similar art style are making a new Zelda game. And this is really huge because it is a new 2D Zelda game. We have not had one of those in a while. And to be clear, it is a... Well, the last uh, 2D Zelda game was the rhythm game. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule, yeah. That's the one. Uh... Yeah, this is the first 2D Zelda game in a bit. Not not a huge while, but a while. And it is also, I believe, the first actually Zelda game. That is absolutely correct. That is absolutely incorrect. Really? Because there's the Zelda CDI game, I The Wand of Gamelon. That does not exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. If you were going to say if you were going to say Hyrule Warriors, then I would have conceded that point because yes, she's playable and yes, she's viable in that game. I mean, by that measure, fucking Smash Bros is a Zelda game. I mean, come on. Well, yes. <laughs> it's but this is the this is the first um non-CDI game uh, <laughs> where Zelda steps into the protagonist role. Yeah, that's and, pretty cool. Uh, some people were expecting her to just use a sword, and I'm like, that's... Mm -mm. No, that would not make a difference in how the... the, the they would just so use cool. Link. Yeah, that, that, would, that would just be a regular Legend of Zelda game, and that's... If, you, if you're going to do a change like this, then do a change like this and make it meaningful. It, Absolutely. Zelda has always been more of the <clears throat> mystic sort i mean she occasionally had... she has taken on a like a frontline fighter role you know the chic thing and everything but yes. it doesn't happen often yeah most of the time magic is her domain mm -hmm. um so in interest really interesting um because uh link to the past and link's awakening are it's the same link um the hyrule that we're in seems to be the same one from link to the past i mean down to the map design Except now you're playing as a Zelda that uh, can't quite do the same things that Link does and has her own way of solving problems, which is the Tri-Rod, which allows Zelda to recreate various objects and um, even enemies that she encounters and uh, defeats in the world to solve puzzles in a very creative manner akin to um, Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild style of puzzle solving. Yeah. I still haven't played Tears of the Kingdom, and I <laughs> have been playing Breath of the Wild in a very interesting way. By which I mean I basically ran around the map collecting various odds and ends and 
never going to any of the uh, sacred beasts and just trying to take down Calamity Ganon without doing so. Hmm. And I was so extremely close to succeeding <laughs> without once going to get the Master Sword or to stop any of the Divine Beasts. I blitzed through all four Calamities and I was one hit away from defeating Calamity Ganon and then I didn't. I haven't mm. touched that game in a while. But yeah, Understandable. It's, uh, it's a kind of a cross between uh, Tears of the Kingdom and I guess a little bit Scribble Nauts, honestly. Yeah, there's a little bit of that Scribble Nauts energy. Mm. Like if if it lets you do like actually creative problem solving of like there's a bunch of things you could potentially do to solve this thing, uh, or if it's just one of those, uh, hey, you need this specific tool to solve this specific problem it would be a lot less they... interesting, frankly. <clears throat> they showcased um, already multiple ways. Like there were the Zelda's walking <clears throat> through this hall, and there's all these gusts of wind. And for one, she uses a box that she can jump on and then just jump across um, to get past that. For another, she creates a very heavy, like potted plant that blocks the wind. And so it seems like um, <clears throat> they are very much keen on there not being like one solution that's intended. I mean, I'm sure that they'll be shoehorning in a handful of puzzles that you have to think in a rather roundabout sort of way and do something in a very specific way to do it. But I mean, that's kind of par for the course, and if they're going to be hiding something particularly good behind it, then it seems worthwhile to me. Yeah, it, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if there are occasional ones that are just, you need this specific thing to to yeah. get past this point as progress blockers specifically yeah yeah exactly. and you maybe get that specific thing from <clears throat> like doing a, a dungeon that you're supposed to do you know yeah a little bit of that classic zelda stuff precisely i'm very excited for this game yeah i'm interested in it myself hmm. i'm not a giant fan of the legend of zelda but i've never played a game that i did not enjoy i think the 2d games are extremely strong in their design and are very fun. Um, so, I mean, if you're not a fan of 3D Zelda, 2D Zelda is a different beast. I, yeah. I like them both. <clears throat> but, I um... played Minish Cap for a long while until it glitched and broke. But until then, I was having fun with it. <clears throat> uh, this seems like it's kind of along those lines, but also very much not Zelda. Well so to speak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I would be curious to try it out. I'm not sure whether I will, just like practically speaking. Like there's a, there's a lot of things that are leaning against it in terms of like, just things that I would play, but I, I definitely wouldn't count it out, which, you know, coming from me is probably a lot because I really don't like yeah. Zelda. Yeah. <clears throat> coming from you, that is a lot. <laughs> um... We also have the uh, we also have the updates to NSO, where they're introducing the Nintendo Switch Online 17 Plus expansion pack, which means there's a non-zero chance that we're going to be getting Conker's Bad Fur Day at some point in the future. Uh, that will be fun. For now, though, we've got uh, Rock Dinosaur Hunter. Never heard of that, and Perfect Dark one of the more acclaimed FPS games for the yeah, Nintendo 64. Uh, not very good. Also, Conker's Bad Fur Day is a mimetic classic game. It is not actually good in any way, shape, or form. People well, just know, remember the gross-out comedy. That's it. Uh, it's just kind of shit. Well, no, mm. that's just the supra Soprano level. You know that. Mm. Uh, um, did we uh, talk about the... My Jeep. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, did we talk about the new Mario Party? No, we did not. Super Mario Party Jamboree. It's looking... I mean, I'm not seeing anything to dislike about it, aside from, I guess, not having more classic boards than just those two. Hey, but, but not... seven boards? That's more than we've gone in a while. True, true. And I mean, I do like the concept. I mean... Everyone in race cars and able to move up to 40 spaces in a turn? That's pretty wacky. Yeah. 
we got um, five new boards plus two new boards, um, and they already did a lot of the um, old boards in Super, uh, not Superstars. It was yeah, Superstars. Um, so hey, I'm excited to uh, play more Mario Party. I love Mario Party. Love that game. Uh, Great. As someone who watched the versus wolves podcast that came out a couple of days ago which had super oh, yeah. eye patch wolves yeah. journey mm-hmm. through dok kingdom my yeah. eyes are looking elsewhere for the hate your friends party games currently <laughs> but uh um i current i own dok kingdom that that sounds fun uh i'm not gonna play you <laughs> <laughs> uh it is yeah don't <clears throat> Mario Party, though, is fun. You only suffer mild um, depression and hatred. <laughs> By comparison, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dokapon Kingdom will put your friendship to the test. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have said it. I, like, I've played Dokapon Kingdom, and uh, I, can, can, I can firmly say... That playing Doug Punk Kingdom mm. with your friends is a great way to not have friends. Mm. <laughs> Every mechanic in that game exists to punch down at people. Well, I mean, there is the one mechanic in the game that is very much designed to punch up at people. Yes. But. Yes. <clears throat> You punch up, and then once they're down, you keep punching down. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah, I, I could go on about the Pond Kingdom, but... Um... <laughs> Something else noteworthy in the direct. Uh, those Ace Attorney spinoff games, Ace Attorney Investigations. Oh, yeah. Investigations they're, they're too, finally released. You're getting Edgeworth and shit, yeah. I've never played an Ace Attorney game, but I've seen enough that I can understand why this is getting a lot of very justified uh, interest. And honestly, I might look into it. I we'll see how it goes. Really enjoy. Um, I've played uh, two of the three games in the original Ace Attorney trilogy. I didn't finish the third one because I got distracted because I have ADHD. Um, but they were really fun. And uh, investigations um, only. One of the first of the, that game came out into the uh, to the West. The second one never did up until this um, release, which is coming with like replacing all the sprites with actually hand drawn art, which is super cool. I really like that as a way because um, in in investigations you can actually walk around the crime scene, um, which is very different from Ace Attorney style of gameplay. And also, you're playing as the opposite side of the. Uh, you're not defending; you're prosecuting, which I find to be really interesting. I actually never got to play Investigation, so I'm actually really looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, this direct has pretty much been. Hey, remember all of these portable franchises and games that you used to love? They're back. <laughs> I mean, this was, I've seen a lot of people saying this was the best direct in a while. And granted, a lot of that was... comes from the last thing. It's a very low bar, to be honest. Yeah, That's what I was getting at. But yeah, I wasn't overjoyed by anything that I saw here, but I was interested by quite a bit. Yeah. The... the only thing I wish there was, and this is a big ask is more information on Professor Layton. <laughs> that's the only thing. Because they they announced that it's coming back, but that's all we got. <clears throat> and that was, what, a year, two ago? Something like that? Something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they're saving that for the next console. I mean, I'm sure that that would be disappointing, but it hmm. wouldn't really be surprising. I have a few last things before we get to the very last thing I just want to bring up real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, which is uh, uh, this isn't a N- Nintendo exclusive thing by any means, but they were like, "Oh, hey, new imposter roles in Among Us," and I played yeah. Among Us recently because I was waiting for the Dawn Trail expansion to come out, so I was <laughs> playing Among Us. 
um, while the servers were down. And they one of the new roles is the Phantom, which means you can turn invisible. You can just do that. Yep. <laughs> That's like a cool cool down and stuff, but I'm, you can I'm, just it's they're they're basically turning it into uh like it it was very clearly a two sides game, very simple, you're either one or the other. And now they're maybe complicating it a little bit more than it needs to, like Trouble in Terrorist Town and the other one that the name escapes me, where there's like half dozen or more roles and everyone has to figure out what the fuck the actual rules of the game are halfway through the game. <laughs> the, the thing I've noticed about the roles is that they're all very simple. The roles just have one action that they can do aside from doing tasks. That's it. Um, so not necessarily having that problem, although I really, like the last time I played it was when they added the hide and seek mode, which is my favorite, because that's really fun. And like hectic and scary, um, but yeah, no, they had, uh, like two new player roles, which were like uh, one of them is really funny because whenever you whenever you die, you let you call uh, a huge alert. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Anyway, um, that that was that was a little thing. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, Mio Memories and Orbit. Um, looks amazing. I love the soundtrack. Um, it's a Metroidvania. I, I saw a lot of Hollow Knight in it. <laughs> yeah, Paige which, mentioned this earlier. Yeah, I didn't get to talk about it because I was like zoned out. Mm. But I really, I'm really excited for it. I wonder why. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Silk Song. What Silk Song? I, I don't know. It's. I mean, I wonder uh, why you're distracted. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Mm, can't imagine. Uh, yeah. No. Crazy. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not actually doing anything in the game. I'm literally just jumping around in circles. But it's very fascinating <laughs> jumping. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Last thing. I would, right? I, will, I would like to bring up a one other thing. Okay. One other thing that's actually interesting, not the Danganronpa knockoff or the, or the Just Dance thing. Uh, that uh, Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection. I've never been really into those games, but... I mean, it seems like a lot of people would be interested. They are very and acclaimed. It, they were never my thing. I really enjoy them, and that game single-handedly is reviving the Marvel vs. Capcom competitive scene, which has been dead for a while. Yeah, there was this thing <laughs> called Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and it sucked donkey balls. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it, it wasn't just bad, it was embarrassing. I bring it. I'm bringing up both because of the hype and because uh, due to that game, I stumbled onto an interesting YouTube channel called the Eight Bit Big Band. You have all of these, uh, all of these instruments coming together to create uh, impressive video game music. I found them making an original uh, take on a full song version of the. Uh, character select i want to take you for a ride thing and <laughs> well posted here and it's quite entertaining and the channel is uh quite impressive so oh, maybe well, give that away um all right the last thing in the in the direct metroid prime 4 beyond beyond so Metroid Prime 4 Beyond has finally been shown coming out next year. Um, this game has been through developmental hell. Um, it switched developers and they've released a whole video on it a few years back. And it's it, like, sorry, we have to restart development. And we're getting a trailer and it looks like a Metroid Prime game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, I mean, a big. <laughs> if that's if that's the result after development hell, and it comes out and it's just a Metroid Prime game, then they pass the assignment, I guess. Like, okay, yeah. People wanted to play more Metroid Prime, new Metroid Prime games, and they wanted a continuation of the story. You know, hmm. don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm. Well, it ended uh, up, as it were. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. It's, I do a thumbs know. down as a sign of rebellion. I don't. I know my daddy. I mean, commander. I mean, daddy. I mean, commander. 
respects and appreciates me for for my rebellious attitude. Uh, oh. Please spank me, Daddy. Sorry, oh, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, the, the baby. The baby. <laughs> Other M was... Mm. It was a thing. Yeah. It, was it was a, a thing. thing. Oh, God. Uh, Do we have to talk about this? Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, no. Good. Uh, uh, one of the characters from Metroid Prime Hunters uh, has returned. Uh, Silex was his name. Um, looks like he's going to be a big baddie. So that's fun. Hmm. They're kind of building him up. He's, apparently uh, he was in Federation Force leading up to this game. Like they were setting up something up with him all the way back there. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think that uh, it's going to be great. The game looks really, really good. Probably going to be on the Switch too. God, I hope that's backwards compatible. I'm actually invested in this console. <laughs> yes, I. <clears throat> backwards so, compatibility is a very, very, very good thing. Here's the here's the thing, right? Because of the method they chose with their games, um, backwards compatibility is going to be super easy because they're just micro SD cards. It it depends on the system architecture. Is is the thing? Like, yeah, SD cards fine. It's it's easy to like make the cartridges themselves compatible acknowledging the fact that most games are sold digitally now but the thing is that was also the case with the ps3 and 4 and you know that ps3 emulation is a pain in the ass because the system architecture is such a mangled terrifying beast of a thing that no one wants to even touch anymore if they can help it yeah. So uh, we've just got to hope that Nintendo is actually paying attention to that and acknowledging that this is kind of an important function. That I I believe so because um, they've always been good about backwards compatibility. The only reason why there was a cutoff from like Wii U to um, Switch was because they switched to uh, <laughs> pun intended uh, switched to the uh, cartridge format because they saw that discs were not working out quite as much anymore. Yeah, come to think of it, you had the Nintendo GameCube to the Wii, and then you had the Wii to the Wii U, both of those were backwards compatible. It's the Switch that was cut off, so if we're going back to the previous format, then yeah, yes, backwards compatibility should be a thing. Hmm. By Nintendo's every really, day. Yeah, Nintendo's really good about that. Um, the only time there's ever a cutoff is when they switch formats entirely. When when they decide to do something wild and wacky, which, let's be real, Nintendo likes to do things that are wild and wacky. You could even play the tiny GameCube discs on the Wii. Like, <clears throat> should should be fine. One can hope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will hope until I am given reason not to. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm, that's that was the direct. It was... Yeah. It was enjoyable. It was very good. Yeah. There, there was a lot of JRPGs. I'm I'm going to be real. A little variety would have been nice, but that's that's in in terms of complaints. That's a very very weak complaint. Uh, the, there was one that had me rolling in laughter and confusion <laughs> when they showed. Oh yeah, Lego Horizons. Lego right. Horizon Zero Dawn. Right. Coming to the Switch. Hey, right. you know that thing that we touted as a sony exclusive yeah you know that thing that is basically owned by sony uh somebody please buy something from horizon <laughs> as, as, we'll put it as, on a fucking like end gauge if we have to just somebody buy it 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 never ceases to amaze me how every single time horizon releases something it's either up against Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, or Tears of the Kingdom, right there, when and it loses you, every time. Did Lego Horizon say when it's coming out? <laughs> I I need to check because I'm I, I it would be funny if it happened again. Holiday 2024. Oh no, it's it's over. Why? Why this time? <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> Holiday. You're I mean, gonna yeah. Put... Hulk, yeah, it's 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 a good Christmas release. Let's be real; like it's a Lego video game. I suppose it's just oh, every every time. Like I I, I I'm I'm starting to feel bad. Like that 
just the timing is always mm. yeah we don't know uh that state so we'll have to see uh i there's there's one other thing that i kind of wanted to bring up and yeah. it's it's really stupid but it's that fucking assassin's creed shadows thing mm-hmm with with the whole Yasuke thing, like let's put aside the argument that I kind of think is a little bit of a valid argument, but we're not going to get into that. They, it's 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 a 16th century black guy in Japan as a, as a samurai. Again, we're not going to have the argument, but they gave him hip hop as his fight music. Oh no. Because he's black, yeah, it's got a, it's Japanese with a trap beat under it, just specifically for him. Wow, Ubi yeah, fun. wow. Like, if ever there was a way that, like, that whole argument that we're putting aside is about, hey, it's racial inclusion and it's fine and everything's great. Let's have this great black character front and center in our game. It's it's going to be great. It's going to be representative of Japanese culture and also a nice fish out of water character and black representation. We're doing so good on all of this stuff. And then if anything was going to completely undercut that, holy shit. The the thing that gets me is that every time somebody criticizes Assassin's Creed Shadows, um, Ubisoft's counter defense is, uh, "Well, you're racist." Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> this is red. This is red scare tactics all over again. Anyone who is uh, suspected of being a communist will be persecuted. Anyone who objects must to be a communist. A little bit. Yeah. It's. It's not great. Like, uh, there is no way to have this conversation. And in fairness, three white guys are on this podcast. There is no way we can have this conversation any further than we already have. But come the would you like me to fuck touch, on. Would you, like me to, would you like me to dust off my Kenji soundboard? No. Oh, no, no, no. 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 For several reasons, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <sighs> I, mm, yeah, I, that I, that is just a thing that has completely shot their entire argument for why they wanted to do this in the foot. Because if they wanted to do representation with this, because oh, ignoring, if they wanted to do that, oh my god, did they do it in a really bad way? Like. Even acknowledging this is what they're trying to do and okay, you're going to do that. You mucked it up so badly. You need to take that out before the game comes out, please. Like, I'm sure someone worked really hard on it. Just have Japanese music. Just have Japanese, traditional Japanese music as the fight music. Just do that. Yeah. Don't, put, don't put a trap beat under it. Don't put fucking G-Funk under it, for the love of God. Just... If you're going to do traditional Japanese and he's a fish out of water but he's adopting the culture, okay, have him adopt the culture. That's it. It's that easy. Mm. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I've not played an Assassin's Creed game since Black Flag. I bought Odyssey. I didn't play it. <laughs> it that, that was the thing that I did. Because I thought, hey, okay, it's not going to be an Assassin's Creed game, but I'm sure there's some worthwhile stuff in there. And? I didn't play it, so yeah, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> like, even, like, even if you acknowledge that Assassin's Creed isn't Assassin's Creed anymore, all, all that you're signing up for instead is just an Ubisoft game. And that is such a complete cookie cutter, like, formula that you can just say an Ubisoft game and everyone knows exactly what you're talking about instantly. Uh. Yep. So, you know, I... Yeah, like, even if even if they weren't being weird, why bother? Even, even if they were doing everything right, who cares? It's an Ubisoft game. It's another one of those. It's another one of those. There's a lot of those. Play one of the dozen others. Ideally <laughs> not that fucking pirate game that they made that you shouldn't play. Jesus Christ, shouldn't you not play that? But, like, you know, 
there's there's plenty of them. It's probably cheaper than the hundred and thirty dollars that this game is. Mm-hmm. Hundred and thirty dollars. Hundred and thirty fucking dollars, Jesus. <sighs> yeah. But Mario and Luigi, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to bring it back to happy times hey Ubisoft is sucking ass like they usually do but Nintendo actually seemed to be doing good so I'm happy about that and they haven't been randomly shutting down studios as far as I know so you know there is one aspect of the game industry that has me mildly excited <laughs> God, everything sucks everything I sucks think- except Nintendo Zero you finally won me over <laughs> <laughs> they they focus on getting good games out. That's it. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're a toy company. That's how they see themselves. So fuck it. Make things that are fun and cool. That's it. Yep. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. God damn it. It's, it's like the point at the industry where we're at is where Sony and Xbox are both kind of floundering a bit. And Nintendo's just like, oh yeah, we're doing fine. Yeah. We're this is a digital voice. Yeah. Oh games. shit, everyone's saying that our console is underpowered. Anyway, here's some great it's games. Great. Oh wow, the console's selling great? Yeah, no, it's fine. Hmm. We'll just release a stronger one later. Yeah. I mean it sucks for Bayonetta, that's a shame, but you know. Like mm, I'm I'm so I'm so happy that uh, at the very least out of all the game developers, Nintendo hasn't died yet. Yeah. Nintendo going are going through. strong. Capcom are going strong. Square Enix, uh, 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 but some of that stuff is going strong. <laughs> it it always strikes me that like every Square Enix game that launches like exclusive on um, PlayStation Five doesn't do good in sales because nobody owns a PlayStation Five still. I'm gonna be real like, with you. I don't think that's the reason. Like, mm? let's let's I... let's be honest. Final Fantasy 16 did pretty good. It didn't do amazing, but it did pretty good. Yeah. Seven Rebirth, I believe, didn't do uh, well according to how Remake doing. Yeah, it didn't do spectacularly. Yeah, let's... Yeah. Okay, you might have a, a, a bit of a point. Those games could have done spectacularly, and they didn't. So, yeah. Which is why uh, a lot of the games that are launching exclusive on... PlayStation Five. If they get the chance, are like let's go to let's go to a PC. Get yeah, sales, I heard way. this PC thing is doing really well. We should <laughs> probably look at that. Holy shit! Maybe we should put our, you know, one of our biggest selling franchises on a platform that isn't dog shit on the PC. That'd be great. Kingdom Hearts is still great. Very fun. Glad it's on Steam. Yeah, uh, I, I remembered something that happened. Um, okay. So this. Is- I did this will see probably another... close this out, by the way. Just yeah, so this will close this out. I saw another movie. Mm-hmm. It's called Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So that's 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 not a great title when you actually. It's think not about a good it. title at all. Kingdom, Kingdom of the of Planet. The planet. Ki- Kingdom of the Planet. The... Mm. Yep. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh. For reference, um, not, not ever Planet since... of the Ape Kingdom would have. Yeah, you know, that would have scan. made more sense. That would have no, scanned we're... better. Yeah, <laughs> we're not we're not doing that. That makes too much sense. Um, we have what was it? Okay, um, we had Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, <clears throat> War for the Planet of the Apes, and now Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, fourth in the reboot series that started back in 2011. Rule the um, ship. Of the planet of the apes, like Oof. command of the planet of the... some something that is like just a verb mm. for it instead of a noun. Just like the concept is going to be like who's in charge kind of thing. If that's what we're doing, I don't know whether mm-hmm. that's what it's about. What's it about, Zero? What's this film you so, saw about? <laughs> so we are now at the point where the monkey people can. They're not monkey people yet. They're still monkeys, but they can talk. They're also apes. They're not monkeys. Apes. Yes, I know. I just like saying monkey. Um, Mm -hmm. The apes can talk now and communicate. And that means we can have um, characters with uh, full dialogue um, and freaking have an RPG protagonist backstory for one of them. Um, It's it's really good. 
I had a great time with this because this is in the like the middle point where all right, civilization's basically gone to crap. Uh, humanity has, for the most part, most of them have been reduced significantly in intelligence and have lost the ability to speak. Um, so they're basically, for the most part, a non-factor. Um, however, uh, the apes now have built, started building their own villages. And uh, one in particular is deciding to build an entire kingdom and gather and steal all of the people together to form this massive kingdom, which he will then expand after he uh, breaches in this old vault and takes a bunch of uh, modern weaponry from. Yeah, this sounds like it should have been called Ruler of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, uh, so our our main... We have a, a trio of um, apes that we start with, though one of them is uh, more of the main character who uh, has his village attacked by, by the... Um, by the ape kingdom who then steal his his uh, people from the village to forcibly insert them into the kingdom and uh he he goes on a a quest of sorts to go and save his village and get his people back and it's really good like i enjoyed all the different character dynamics um the way that they treated the kind of the fallen civilization and um the character development it was very fun i enjoyed it like that was this is supposed to apparently start a new trilogy of movies. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> Which I just found out like just now when I was looking up for like what the list of the movies I could recite them out. Um yeah, no, I I would recommend watching it actually. You don't really need to know much of the lore of the uh previous three because it's they they bring up the stuff that's relevant. But yeah. I enjoy Good, good story, good adventure, um, good larger themes that are discussed that are really good. Yeah. Please watch. That's it. I'm done. Podcast okay. over. Uh, Patreon hasn't uh, ticked yet, has it? Has not. Okay. Has Have we recorded a podcast this month that... Uh... I don't know. I believe so. I think I recall reading it out. Yeah, I think... Last it was time. Really yeah. Yeah, that was the 10th. That would have been... Yeah, we would have done that. Okay. It's, whew, it's been a month. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's a podcast. Mostly upbeat, except when I brought down the mood the last second, because that's what I do, because I'm a dick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> There's no, no, no witty follow-up on that. <laughs> no, but I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, self-evident. It's fine. It's just, you know, honesty. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Discord link in the description for more of Casey being a dick and, you know, bringing down the mood. Uh, Patreon link in the description if you would like to support Casey being a dick. and uh, <laughs> or, the, or the other good people that are also here and are not miserable word that Americans are fearful of that I'm not going to say because Americans hate <clears throat> Bye everybody <laughs> Bye Rabbits